If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Genesis chapter 18, verse 9 through 19. If you don't have your Bibles, it'll be on the board. It's always good to look at it and read it along with us. But we'll just get right into the Word tonight. I love your worship tonight. I love that song, None Better Than You. And I just sat there thinking about where could I go, amen. Don't have nowhere else to him, amen. If there's none better, when somebody said there's nothing better, how do you find the best, amen. And I'm telling you, nothing ever took the place of the Lord in my life. Good to have visitors with us tonight. Good to have you with us tonight. Got some of our regular folks out, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to have Brother Wilson back. Amen. Hadn't been able to come in a while. Brother Roy, good to have Ralph. And it's good to have everybody tonight. Good to have my son, his friend, tonight. So, so good to be in the house of God tonight. It's good to have Summer here tonight. Where's she at? She says, I don't ever call her name. Amen. Good to have Summer here. Worship tonight with us as we read the scriptures. Amen. Verse 9 says, and you can read it along with us on the board. Amen. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? That's the three men that appeared to him. And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee accordingly to the time of life. Lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And he said, now Abraham, now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also, being old also. Amen. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did I laugh, did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? which I'm old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for I was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. Amen. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham this thing that I do, amen. Seeing that Abraham have surely became a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth in him shall be blessed, amen. For I know him, amen. For I know him, and he will command his children, his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring Abraham that which he have spoken of him, amen. Don't laugh. Wait to see what God can do for you. Amen. All through the Bible, people got laughed at. Amen. And all through life. I remember being raised as a little boy in Belmont. And it's a long time ago, you know, back in the 50s and early 60s. I can remember people laughing at my daddy because he was Pentecostal and because of what he stood for and what he was. Amen. And uh, how strict he was on us kids. I mean, you know, it was just... You just had to be in there to see it, amen. But it's okay. It's worth the laughing at, amen. I'm glad he's in heaven. I'm glad I'm 72 years old and still on my way to heaven, amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you tonight, amen. Don't laugh. Wait and see what God can do. Father, we love you tonight. Pray that you'll touch us tonight. Help us, Lord, to read this scripture and preach this word as you give us to do it tonight, Lord. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we know you're God. We know you're real. We know you're going to take care of us tonight. We give you all the praise and all the glory for all of us tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Set the song. All right, praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You can wave at somebody, shake somebody's hand if you're close enough, hug somebody's neck, whatever you feel led to do. Amen. So good to see you. Good to have Geraldine listening to us tonight on her birthday. I hope you enjoyed that song. Uh, it's an old one. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Uh, Robin's birthday, as somebody already said, she wasn't able to be here this morning. 
uh, she was working, but uh, it's good to have her tonight. Good to have you tonight. Amen. Uh, I talked to a woman after lunch today, just right after lunch, whose husband is definitely sick. If you know who I'm talking about, all right. Uh, it doesn't matter. But and when they spoke faith in God to the doctor, she said the doctor seemed to snicker at the thought of God turning things around for him. Uh, but God can, and, and we better not laugh at what God is doing in our life. I mean, if you do, you, you may see it and not get to be a part of it. There's a story in Second Kings chapter 7. If you had your Bibles and you want to look at it, you could. It's all right. But there's a story there about Elijah uh, who had just been a uh, double portion from God. But then because of what he was doing, they locked him up, and they had somebody looking after him, and he spoke to them, and in uh, in in Second Kings seven and five, and said, then Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. I preach this many times. You ought to be familiar with it. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord whose hand the king leaned on answered the man of God. And said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, amen, might this thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And if you read down to the last verse, And the Lord that answered the man of God, and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might see such a thing. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Amen. Don't laugh at what people say God told them. Don't laugh at what the man of God said. It will happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just believe that. Amen. When Nehemiah was building the wall around Jerusalem, you remember the enemy destroyed it, uh, and they were rebuilding it, and then they laughed at him and said things like, but it came to pass that Samballad heard that we builded the wall. He was wroth and took great indignation, and he mocked us, mocked the Jews, and he spake unto his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews, feeble Jews making fun of them? Will they fortify themselves or will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in the day? Will they receive the stones of the heaps of the rubbish? which are burned. And now Tobiah and Am Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Uh, it wouldn't keep a fox out is what he was saying. I laughed at him. Uh, but you find that they quit laughing when the wall was being built and tried to get him off the wall. You know the story. Just giving you some points and a couple of stories. Goliath laughed at David before David killed him in 1 Samuel 17, 42 to 50. But he just said in verse 43, I'm I dog that thou comest to me with stabs, and the Philistines cursed David by his God. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. You know what he was doing? He was laughing at him. Amen. Laughing at God's man, anointed just a kid out there, fixing to take him down. Somebody say amen. And he was laughing at him. Amen. And the Bible says that, you know, it came to pass. When the Philistines arose, they came and drew near. David, David hasted and ran toward him to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and sling it and smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone suck, it stuck into his forehead and he fell upon the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistines with the sling and with the stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Amen. Uh, he told him, I come to you in the name of the Lord. The question tonight that could center from this message is, is highlighted in verse 14 when he said, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Maybe we'll dwell on that fact just for a few minutes and finish up here in a minute. But the question is, is, is there anything too hard for God? For a thousand of, for thousands of years, man have failed to answer uh, this question. Man may have doubt. 
See what Jeremiah said about it in uh, chapter 32, verse 17. We read his words. Oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there was nothing too hard for thee. He knew that. He stood on that like we have to today. But he preached 40 or 50 years and never got a soul saved. It didn't look like it was working for him. But deep in his heart, he told God, I know that there's nothing too hard for you. People didn't like him because he spoke that word. I trust today we'll agree with Jeremiah and realize tonight that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. In Genesis 15, verses 4 through 6, gave uh, the promise to Abram and whose name was changed to Abraham. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, This shall not be thine heir, uh, talking about Ishmael, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine out. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, or count the stars, tell the star, if there be able a number to them. And he said in him, So shall I see be. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Even though Abraham believed God, I can't help but wonder myself, and I don't know how you feel about it tonight, but I can't help but wonder what was going through his mind because he was getting older and God's promise was not fulfilled. Uh, you know, uh, was was 75 when God told him, and now he's 100, and Sarah's 90, and God's telling him uh, that he still got that promise. I'm telling you, sometimes it don't come when you want him, but he'll be right on time. We have to stand on God's word and believe what God said. And, uh, you know, I can't help but wonder that maybe, uh, you know, what was going through his head, when is it going to happen? You ever been promised something by the Lord? even through the word or through a spoken word, prophecy, uh, maybe tongues and interpretation, whatever happened in your life that brought it to you, but it never come and it never come and never come, never come, and then one day it came, amen. I'm telling you, there's been times when I can't help but tell you, uh, I told you about the girl that didn't like the song, A Fireball for the Lord, but she was like 17 coming to church, and I'll never forget her. But she told me she didn't like that song. Uh, let us have a talk with Jesus. She said, because sometimes you have doubts and fears, it says. And she said, I don't have them. I said, you ain't live long enough. You live a little bit longer, and you'll have some doubts and fear. And I believe tonight that some of the times we've had doubt. We don't like to admit it, but I've had to go back and apologize to God and say, why did I ever doubt you? Why did I ever think you wasn't going to work this out? Why did I ever think you wasn't going to heal me? Why did I ever think you wasn't going to get the marriage better? Why did I ever think? the church wasn't going to grow why did I ever think this or that or the other because the devil tells me in my ears and I see things and, and sometimes we quit walking by faith and start walking by sight and that's wrong somebody hear me today I said that's wrong you can't do it and so I can't help but wonder what Abraham thought he was a man of God there ain't no doubt he was a friend of God Sometimes in life we might have doubts as to what God's saying and we might try to get help God as Sarah, Abraham's wife did and tried to help God out. I can hear Sarah. But if God told you he's going to do something and if you are sure it is God speaking, do not be misled by anyone. Stand on the word of God that God's going to do what God said he would do. No matter who they are, but just simply wait on God and believe God until the answer comes. That's what you got to do. I'm telling you, uh, Betty and I were talking last night, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, the ball games that were on, and we weren't watching them, but Brad was calling Betty up and telling them, uh, her team was losing and they were going to get in trouble and all this kind of stuff. So we were flipping channels and seeing them a little bit. And I've said it before, and it, it you know, it, it maybe was like a joke, but, you know, when – when they when they come through on the end and they're coming back and 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 they're about to win and and they get within a point of winning and the game goes over and they don't win, Amen. I told Betty, I said, what happens? They they just run out of time, Amen. They were about to win, Amen. If they had had another minute, they could have won, Amen. And then we talked about some games. It was sixty to thirty. I said they didn't run out of time. They was hurrying it up. They wished it in, Amen. And sometimes that's the way we feel about life. We just wish this thing. Wish the pain to go away. 
Wish the hurting would stop. Amen. But I'm telling you, God's still in control. And if God told you he'd heal all your diseases, he wasn't lying. Amen. God said he'd forgive all your sins, he wasn't lying. He's still God. Hallelujah. He's still God. With the lightning flashing, when the thunder rolls, when the sun's shining, when it's pretty, it doesn't matter what it is, he's still God. Amen. And we need to believe that today with all our heart and quit letting doubt creep into our mind because it does sometimes. Amen. But uh, in Genesis 15, God promised Abram that he would have this son. And now the devil's trying to come against that. Amen. Uh, you know, he believed God. Amen. And like I said, you can't hardly help but think what was going through his mind. If God told you you're going to do something and you're sure it's God speaking, don't be misled. God does not need your help or my help. God is able uh, I hear me tonight to operate effective without our interference. We can get into trouble if we try to help God. Amen. Want to do it. I, and, and, you know, I know people that have messed their life up. And I can tell you that if they'd have waited on God, if they'd have waited just a little bit longer, God had this in store and that in store. And uh, they just would not wait on God. But we got to wait on him. Hallelujah. If you don't understand what God is doing, just wait and see what is happening. Noah was told to go build an ark. It did not make sense to those around him, but he simply believed God and obeyed God. Maybe he was laughed at. I can imagine them laughing at that crazy man building a boat down here and said it's going to flood. Don't even rain here. Abraham and Sarah both failed God. But even in their failure, God was still merciful. It seems to me Abraham could not answer the question, is anything too hard for God? When Abram was 90 years old and, and 9, the, the, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. Verse 17, Abram fell on his face and and laughed himself. This is in uh, the other chapter, chapter uh, 16 or 17 there, but in the 17th verse, Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? In our text today, the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the plains of Manry. God sent three angels from heaven, and he appeared, and they appeared as men just come to visit Abraham. Somebody hear me tonight. That seemed to be all it was, just going to pay him a visit. And Abraham prepared a banquet for these heavenly visitors. Uh, verse 6 through 8 of the text, we of our text. And while the angels were being entertained and, and them cooking for them and, and the, uh, all the things that they've done, you can read it there. Uh, while they were eating and dining in verse 9 of our text, and they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, she's in the tent. In verse 10, uh, a promise was again given to Abraham. And he said, Certainly, I will certainly return unto the courting of the time of her life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard in the tent door which was beside him. Paper thin walls today. You can hear what people say. I can imagine how easy it was in the tent. Somebody hear me tonight. But, uh, uh, but Sarah heard it in the tent door. The question is not... How old is Sarah? But the question is, is anything too hard for God? Somebody hear me tonight. Amen. Some are singing a song about that. Amen. And it said when uh, Sarah was 90, God gave her a child. You can't ask too much of God. God can do all things tonight. Hallelujah. In our eyes, we see problems. In our eyes, we see the impossibilities. But let the, let the answer to question mine, Jeremiah, as Jeremiah did, there's nothing too hard for Sarah had heard the promise. And even though the message was from God, she had doubts in her mind. Verse 12 said she laughed, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord? Being also, old folks, listen to me. I don't walk fast anymore, but God is not limited tonight to what the flesh can do. Somebody hear me tonight. I'm telling you, I may have some age on you, but it don't matter to God tonight. Somebody hear me tonight. Hallelujah. God is not limited to what the flesh can do. Praise the Lord. I believe that. Is anything too hard for God? 
at the time appointed I will return unto thee according to the time of life. He told Sarah, shall have a son. Sarah denied laughing, but God knows. You can deny it. Now, you can deny it, but God knows if you don't like it, if you get mad about it, if you laugh about it, you're not pulling anything off on God. I'm about through. Somebody praise the Lord. We, Amen. The men arose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide this from him, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great mighty nation? You know that. But he said that what he was talking about was he was fixing to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he did share it with him. Uh, he knew Abraham was right, for I know him, is what he said. And that he will command his children, his household after him, they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he's spoken in verse 14. The question was asked, anything too hard for God? I'm telling you, I know it's not. How many know it's not? Amen. Hallelujah. The question God uh, is asking man today, is anything too hard for God? I wonder if we're willing to do what God says to do to get the answer that God wants to give us. The answer in Jeremiah states, there's nothing too hard for God. Turn to somebody beside you and ask them the question, is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? I promise you it's not. I promise you there's not anything too hard for God. you not too hard for God. Amen. If you need uh, to move and you haven't moved, if you need to get saved and you're not saved, if, if God's asked you to do something, I can tell you right now, you're not too hard for God. Amen. Everybody should answer, no, there's nothing too hard for God. I, I want someone to know our God is still performing miracles. Do you need a miracle from God? Then ask him. I'm about to close here. Because there is nothing too hard for God, it really means something. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm about to close. Amen. Do you need to see a loved one being saved? Then ask God. Because there is no thing, nothing, no thing, nothing too hard for God the Lord have you reached uh, some hard time in your life seems there's no way out if you ain't never been there you probably will before you die amen there don't look there's no way out of this mess ask God to make a way out for you because there's nothing too hard for the Lord nothing too big for my God no 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 not gonna be denied there's nothing too big for God amen Hallelujah. Nothing too hard for the Lord. Do you need some money to pay the bills that are piling up? Ask God. Do you need a job? Ask God. I want someone to know today there's nothing too hard for God because there is nothing too hard for God. Why not put your complete trust in him, believe him? Sarah and Abraham tried to help God out. Sarah laughed because she had doubts about what God was going to do but verse 20 Genesis 21 verse 2 and 3 we read these words for Sarah conceived and bear a son bear Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God has spoken to him and Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare to him Isaac and now I'm down to just a few things I really am close and I got it on my paper here one preacher said when the leaven or least is placed inside the dough, and I don't know much about that, but I was I understand what he was saying. It's placed inside the dough, then it's affected. He said if Christ is outside of our lives, then our lives are ineffective. But when Christ is in our lives, then our lives are affected. The leaven causes the dough to rise. I do know that. The leaven brings out an effect on the dough, and Christ should be that leaven that brings out a change in our lives. Somebody hear me tonight. If we find ourselves not being Christ-like, maybe we need that leaven to bring a change in our life. Is there anything too hard for God? Somebody say, no. Can God take a troubled life and bring about a change? Somebody say, yes. God can take a life that is outside of Christ and bring it into him where it can change and where God can Believe it, accept it. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worship with Tim and Charlie. Hallelujah. As they sing tonight. And then the altar's open. Amen. If you need something from God, if you're one of those that said, I'm one of them that's doubted God, I just don't know if it's ever going to get better. 
that he sang a song. I don't know how things will go better. I just know that somehow they will. I don't know how things will work out in your life or mine, either one sometimes. I mean, I don't know where the thing ends up. I know what he said to bring us to an expected end that God has good thoughts for us. But I can't tell you how it's going to end for you or me. But I can tell you, if you trust God tonight, God will make a way when there seems to be no way seen. Hallelujah.